Okay, if you've got a G plus four and you're wanting to use the consumable drying feature, and you're like me, you couldn't find any kind of documentation, instruction, or manual, video, any kind of guidance on how to use this thing without screwing anything up, here's a quick uh, how-to. So you'll go to tools, consumable drying, you'll click that. It's gonna give you this message, pretty much telling you don't have anything on the bed or in the way because it does a homing feature real quick, or a homing procedure. I'm gonna pause and bring it back when it gets to that point. And we're touching off. Like I said, this is why you don't want to have anything on the bed where you will be replacing parts most likely. And here's where we're at now. So once the bed comes back down, you've got options. Sadly, you cannot change these temperatures, which is really annoying. I hope Chitty does a firmware update that allows you to customize these temps and times, but you would click here and you can select from the different filament options. Sorry for the shaky phone but you can go through and pick what you want. I'll be doing some ASA. So what's already selected at the top, hit this little back arrow and hit start. And it'll start heating. Now, this part probably isn't required. I do it as a kind of a safety buffer, but I folded up some aluminum foil. It's about three or four layers worth. Let's see if I can do this one handed without hitting anything or messing anything up. I just lay this across the bed just to kind of give a buffer and disperse the heat across. From what I can tell, you can do probably four spools at a time. And you just lay them as such, and then stack on top. I did four the other day, just two and two. Um, I doubt you can put any more than that. You might be able to if you stand them up, not sure. But anyways, what you want to do, and it even tells you, flip it after every six hours. It's got a 720 minute run time. Close the door, close the lid on top. Don't use a little kickstand or anything to vent. You want it to get hot in there. But uh, just let it bake. After it gets done, move to one of these dry boxes. They got a whole bunch of different options for these dry boxes you can do. You can find them online on uh, printables and such. But um, yeah, make sure you move those to either you know, dry box like that, dry box like that once it dries. From what I was told, it's probably more so with like ABS or some of the carbon fibers, some filaments that absorb moisture, but don't trust it to be dry straight out of the vacuum seal pouch because these spools probably sit on the shelf in a warehouse for a while before they actually get put in a sealed box or bag. So if you're printing anything that absorbs moisture, dry it before printing with it. Um, or else you end up with something like this. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, this little, that's ABS. Um, I was told that was caused most likely from moisture, but anyways, that's it.